What's going on everyone, Brad here, and in this video, I wanna talk about seat to seat consistency, what it is and why it's so important, and I'll also show you how to easily measure it in REW. Now you may see the term seat to seat consistency thrown around a lot, especially when talking about multiple subwoofers, which is what this video will primarily focus on. But what exactly is it and why is it something you should care about? Well, it's actually pretty self-explanatory as the term Excel suggests. It refers to sound and bass from your subwoofers as you move through your listening area. Basically, think of how the bass sounds from your main listening spot on your couch or in your theater seats to what it sounds like at the seats further to the left and right where other people might sit. That is seat to seat consistency in a nutshell. But why is it so important? Well, first, having similar sound in all your listening positions means that any other people watching a movie with you are going to have a great experience. They'll have a similar sound to what you have at your main listening position. Not the exact same sound, obviously, but similar. And secondly, if you have a couch instead of theater seats like I do, it gives you the flexibility to move around or even lay on the couch and still get great, even sound without drops or nulls in the frequency response. It can actually be a big game changer depending on how you like to consume content in your home theater. So how do you get great seat to seat consistency with your bass? Well, multiple subwoofers set up properly, meaning they're in phase with each other as well as aligned properly with your main left and right speakers are really the best and easiest way to get there. To show you what I mean and how you can measure this stuff for yourself, let's hop over into REW. But before that, if you're new to the channel and are into home theater and gaming like I am, consider hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell icon so you never miss a new upload. And while you're down there, a like on this video would be much appreciated. I also have affiliate links in the description to items I use in this video as well as some others. Using these links doesn't cost you anything and really does help the channel out. Now let's open up REW and get started. Okay, so we're here in REW, I have it opened up and I'll just run through my settings real quick to make sure that we're both on the same page in case you wanna follow along with me here. So under preferences, I'm just using the Java, I'm not using ASI overall, no real need for that here. Then on AVR, selected as my output device, I have my input device as my UMic 1. And under my Cal files, I just have the 90 degree files in here. I have the mic pointed straight up right now at the main listening position. And it's gonna be set straight up all the way through all of these measurements. So that's good to go there. And then my receiver, I set my crossover to 250 Hertz just to focus on the subwoofer's response here. Didn't really want to focus on anything else. So we're just going over the subwoofers in this video for the seat to seat consistency. I did turn up my overall volume using the SPL meter and noise generator within REW. So for the generator, I have noise, pink random and speaker cow selected. And then for the SPL meter, I just made sure that this read 75 dB and I did that using the overall volume on the uh, remote for the Denon receiver that I have. So I'll just verify that really quick. All right, and perfect. So we are good to go there. All right, so what I wanna do now is I wanna take measurements at five different seating positions on my couch. Technically, the couch can only seat three people, but I'm gonna be doing in-between measurements because I might wanna lay down while I'm watching a movie or cuddle with my wife. And I wanna make sure that when I'm not in my prime main listening position where everything sounds awesome, that I'm still getting decent sound. Now for this video, I'm gonna be doing four different measurements. You don't have to do four different measurements. You're, you can just have all your subs on at one time, do measurements and that's it. But for demonstration purposes in this video, I'm gonna separate the subs. So I'm gonna do the front right sub. So this is indicative of having a single sub in your home theater. And then I'm gonna add the front left sub. So I'm gonna have the front two subs firing at the same time. Then I'm gonna do a measurement with all three subs. So I have the front two and then the one right down here, you can't see it, right behind the couch. I'm gonna have all three of those. And then finally, I'm gonna do a measurement that has my EQ and house curve and everything using the mini DSP enabled so we can kind of see what's going on there as well. So I'm gonna run through the first set of measurements here at the main listening position. And then I'll do the rest of them off screen so I don't bore the heck out of you guys with an hour and a half worth of measurements. So, all right, so to do the measurements here, I'm just gonna click on measure, and I've already labeled this R sub MLP. I've ran through this already. Everything else setting wise here is, is fine. For the range, you want 10 to 250 Hertz. You don't want 20,000. You can do it, but you're just 
kind of wasting time. For the output, I just have it L plus R. You can set it on L or R, doesn't really matter, or L plus R. And then for the length, 256K is fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on start. We'll see what happens. This is just the front right sub. Okay, not too bad. I'm in the all SPL tab, by the way, in REW. So not a bad frequency response for a single sub, but let me turn on the left sub and we'll do another measurement there. Click on measure. We'll label this R plus L sub. All right, so we're already getting a bit more output here. So for this one, I'm gonna label it R plus L plus B. So right plus left plus back sub MLP. I'll turn the back sub on. All right, so even more output. I do wanna add that I haven't EQ'd these at all. These are all just time aligned, that's it. Nothing special or anything is done with those. Then finally, we'll go ahead and do a measurement of the house curve. So for this one, I'll just label it house curve or HC MLP, and then I'll just click on start. All right, so as you can see here, if I turn all these off, you got the house curve intact there, so looking pretty good. But that's essentially what I'm gonna do for all seating positions. So for you, like I said, you don't have to do all these separate ones unless you want to, you can. You want to stick with either all your subs turned on, so like for this, without the house curve or the mini DSP, it would be the R plus L plus B. So I would just go through and measure each different position with only that. Or for my setup actually, because I have the mini DSP, I would just select the one that has the house curve and I would do five different seating positions. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other four seating positions now and I will be back and we'll go over those and we'll see what's going on there. All right, so we're back in REW and as you can see, I've done a ton of measurements. This took a while because you know, you gotta move things around, but I basically wanna start with comparing just a single subwoofer because I think that's what a lot of people are running or have ran in the past and compare that to performance across the seating area with both front subs on and then adding that third sub. And then we'll also kind of look at what's going on with the house curve. So right off the bat, the main listening position, that's where I've positioned the sub to sound the best. And this is the best that I can get in my room without any EQ or anything. Not too bad, honestly. It is helped out by adding more subs. So with all three subs on, that's looking a lot better. And again, I should add that I've level matched these a little higher. So for the mini DSP when doing the EQ and stuff, I have a little more room to work with. So this looks pretty good, but what happens with just a single sub if we move slightly to the left? So this is the in-between measurement of the main listening position and the left side of the couch. And if we compare it to the main listening position, we can already see we're getting starting to get this dip here. That's not good. You know, I mean, the frequency response is gonna change a bit. That's inevitable. This is not a perfect room. This is not an ideal situation at all. But if we add maybe a second sub, ch check out what happens. We immediately get rid of this lack of bass here in this null area. Now, one could argue that you could try to EQ this, but EQing nulls isn't really something that you ever wanna try to do. But adding a second sub, you see we're already smoothing that out. By adding a third sub, smoothing it out even more to where it's not even an issue anymore. It's just, just isn't. So that's pretty awesome there. So if we move on to the far left position, you'll notice if we compare it, now we got even a, a sharper dip right here around 50 hertz. And so that's obviously a lack of bass. Now, if we compare that to the main listening position, yeah, I mean, we're getting a little boost here, but we're losing output here. It's not really what we want at all. So again, if we just flip on two subs here, we're already starting to see this issue go away. We still have a little bit of funkiness. It's not incredibly smooth here, but uh, that's okay, but adding that third sub, again, not even an issue anymore. So just three subs by themselves, no EQ at all, is already getting us a, a much better response on the left side of our listening position. We'll go ahead and move on to the measurement just to the right of the listening position. So in between the far right and the middle of the couch. And as you can see, if we compare it to the main listening position, again, not too much difference, honestly. It's looking pretty good. But if you notice, if we turn on another sub, then we're starting to get some, some weirdness here. And if we turn on all three subs, we even got more of a null. So what's going on? Well, this isn't a perfect room, like I said. I mean, much we could do here, just kind of the location of where things fall and how they're time aligned and everything. We could go in and tweak some stuff, but honestly, it's not really that huge of an issue because 
If I'm gonna lay down, I'm normally laying on my left side anyway, so I'm not too worried about this. So finally, if we go to the far right, this is where things get kind of interesting. So the far right sub, as you noticed uh, right away, uh, it still you know looks relatively similar to this. We've actually gained a little output here. We lost a little here. You know, it's it's a give and take. So if we turn on another sub, you'll notice immediately if we can actually compare it to the one just to the left of it, it doesn't have that same issue there. And if we turn on three subs, we're looking pretty good. We lost a little bit of output here, but if we compare it to all three subs on before, yeah, it's it's totally better. So as you can see, just going through those compared to the single sub, even with just two subs, you're getting a lot better frequency response without all of those dips and nulls. And then obviously the more subs you add and when you time align them properly, they will give you a better frequency response. So it says I compared all of those. I'm just gonna quickly compare all three subs on at one time. So this is gonna kind of look like what maybe you have if you have multiple subs and you just measure them all at once. So main listening position looking good. Just to the left of that, in between the left and the right seats, again, looking good. We'll compare it to the one on the far left, not looking too bad. Got a little boost here, but not anything too crazy, not anything to worry about. And then just to the right of it, we have that dip here. Again, not too worried about that. And then we have the far right. Again, we lost some output here, but uh, not, not too bad at all. Finally, I'll go ahead and go over my house curve stuff. So this is my main listening position house curve and I'll extend this out a little bit so you can kind of see what I got going on. So essentially uh, I have this set up so it's 10 decibels higher at 20 to 30 Hertz and then it slopes down to whatever I set the front left speaker to. So that's 75 decibels. Since I'm running both L plus R and REW, you're gonna get more output. So disregard the overall level here, but this, this is the house curve that I set up. It's not perfect, but honestly, it looks fine as it is and it sounds great. So if we start going down the line here and comparing this main listening position to the left listening position, actually the, the one just to the left, not the far left, we have that little bump here at around 30 to 40 hertz, which a bump is always better than a null. And then as we move further, to the left, you'll notice that that increases and this de decreases a little bit. But overall, it, it looks pretty good for being as far left as possible on the couch. And then if we compare that to the position just to the right of that, that's the one that has that weird null in there that it's probably a room mode. Because anything that sharp that that goes down that quickly uh, is probably something to do with the room. You know, room treatments and subwoofer placement can fix this, but again, I don't really lay that way or sit there when I'm watching anything, so I'm not too concerned about it. And then finally, if the far right, you see we have a lot of dropout here, but this is just all the way on the other side of the couch. You know, not too bad, uh, honestly. It still sounds great over there. I've sat in all these positions just to see what they sound like. And you really can't notice too much. I mean, yeah, the main listening position sounds the best out of all of them, but any of these, especially if someone's not an audiophile or really into sound or anything, they just think it sounds great then they're really not gonna notice any of this stuff. Overall, this is much better than if we were to just stick one sub and deal with that. So if you have the ability to get multiple subwoofers, definitely go for it. It's only going to benefit you overall in your sound department, not just in seat to seat consistency, but also overall headroom and being able to fill your space with more bass than just a single subwoofer. So there you have it. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. What if I run my towers at full range and have my subs playing too? Well, I may just be working on a video about that very topic, so keep a lookout. But what I can say is that you typically run into more issues than it's worth most of the time. And if you don't have a way to measure your response, like a U-Mic 1 with REW, you're just taking shots in the dark and potentially robbing yourself of bass that you paid for. More on that though in a future video. Now, if you have any questions about what I covered in this video, please leave me a comment and I will get to it if I can. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.